So hello and welcome to our second Peel Education Series for our fall semester. Uh, I'm Jacqueline Romero. I'm the Director of Student Engagement and I welcome you and I thank you for joining us today. A few things before we get started. Um, please be sure to mute yourselves. If you have any questions, feel free to type it in the chat box and we will try to address them accordingly. But we will have a Q&A at the end of the series if you'd like to wait. Um, please note that these, this series is being recorded and will be added to our PO YouTube channel for you to reference in the future. We'll also be sending out a communication about our channel in the next few days um, to provide some detailed information. So we thank you for your participation and we do hope that you enjoy yourselves. So now it is my honor to introduce Dr. Giovanni Ortua. He's been an adjunct professor with Pacific Oaks for over four years, going on five. He's earned his bachelor's in philosophy from Cal State Long Beach, his master's in history and PhD in Latin American studies and United States history with an emphasis on critical race theory from UC Irvine and has served various institutions here and abroad. For over 15 years as a professor, a writer, a researcher, a counselor, a peer mentor, and a student mentor, Dr. Artua's journey has taken him to spaces across the globe that have fueled his passion in working with the community and embracing the spirit of resistance, art, literature, sport, and humanity. As a Colombian American, he testifies to the challenges of being from here and there, and at the same time, ni de aquí ni de allá. As Dr. Gio, he has made it a personal mission to remind students that their ancestral resilience is a vital key to recognizing the continual trials and tribulations faced by communities today. The struggle continues and our relationship to the struggle defines how we see the world and envision the future. Our topic for today is addressing and com combating insecurity, imposter syndrome, and microaggressions, Hispanic serving institutions, serving students, and Nuestra Comunidad. I now present to you Dr. Giovanni Ortu. Come on in. All right. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. You know, of course, good evening, good evening. And by all means, you know, I am not kidding of the fact that I'm going to need your energy tonight. This is good because it's coming from the heart, coming from the soul. And we want to bring it for every single person in this room joining us because it is vital for us to, without a doubt, you know, conceptualize, right, this particular era, this moment in which we not only celebrate much of what we are as, as people, as communities, comunidad, but also as gente, gente de color, you know, jeunes de color, right, people who are thinking about processing and being able to bring every day the best experience possible so this is what i want beautiful people i do want you to understand that tonight you know my goal is to get us to you know in a particular mindset a mindset that is free liberating revolutionary and conceptually analyzing every angle in which we got to think about some of these some of these moments in which it has brought to us the way in which our community has been shaped the way in which community continues to surge forward in the 21st century. So, um, you know, you heard the intro. I can't believe I wrote all that, but you know the intro, and you heard, um, you know, what what I've what I've done, what I've been doing, what I continue what I continue to do on a day to day. So, before we actually start, I do want to acknowledge the lands we're on. I think it's imperative to do that. Um, you know, we fight this tooth and nail as best as we can, right? But recognizing is one step forward. Okay, so acknowledgement to respect. We acknowledge the Tongva people as a traditional take take uh, traditional caretakers of the Tongva or the Tongva world, including the LA Basin, South Channel Islands, San Gabriel, Pomona Valleys, and portions of Orange, San Bernardino, and the Riverside counties. We are located within these lands. This institution located on unceded Tongva land. We definitely pay our respects to the ancestors, elders, and our relatives' relation past, present, and emerging. Consistent with our values of community and diversity, we have a responsibility to acknowledge and make visible the university's relationship to Native peoples by offering this land acknowledgement. We affirm indigenous sovereignty and will work 
to hold all learning institutions more accountable to the needs of American Indian peoples, right? So once again, you know, this is something that I think is is not gone away. This was never a fad. This is something that we hold true. And I've been holding this true for over 15 years that I've been teaching this. So let's always think about the lands that we reside on, the lands that we transverse and, and move forward to. Tonight, this is what I have. So this is the menu. I always call it the menu, right? Because you know, when we're talking about how to think about, you know, um, elements of um, Hispanic serving institutions, I think it's it's important for us to really consider going from a theoretical basis of the macro to the micro, right? And back and forth, right? Micro to the macro, because in doing so, then we can reflect on the state of the world in 2023, right? So it's a lot going on. And I know that's an understatement, but I want you to understand that everything that has been transpiring this year and of course, historically, you know, nothing is a coincidence, right? We're not going to speak in coincidences anymore. And so what, you know, one of the ways I want to also address this and to think about this is that what we're, you know, what we've gone through is important to look at as much as what we're expecting or what was expected, either systemically, structurally, uh, infrastructurally, or even, you know, in terms of legality. And also where we're going with this, right? What we're still going through, what's still taking place. And so, you know, I want us to really think about this as a journey, right? As a as as a space for us to re-identify ourselves and revamp, you know, the the essence of what we have gone through, you know, through you know these different uh, periods of time. And then, of course, I have these recommendations. I want to talk about my, you know, people talk about isms, right? You know, we got those isms definitely floating around still, but I can talk about the Ives, the I V E S, right? So I have some. Some uh, some eyes for the H HSI is definitely to recognize, and that is not a coincidence the way I put that together. And so let's let's get to this because then we have to focus on what to expect in 2024. All right, friends. So here we go. When we talk about the macro, right, the overall consensus of what's been going on, you know, the way I imagine this obviously is what's been going on, you know, not only well with the conflict in Israel and Palestine, right, but we're also thinking about you know, you know, the the idea of what's what's transpiring in terms of, um, you know, climate change, right, is a very imperative moment for us to think about as much as what's going on in the Ukraine still, right, you know, policies um, harking back to the Cold War era. And, and of course, you know, we got to think about wealth and the G20, right, this this notion about the, the puppeteers, right, that control the planet um, in terms of the, the greatest wealth, um, you know, placed in into, into these particular nations, including, of course, ours. Um, and then, you know, the the idea of what's transpiring within other political party systems like the Republican debates that have been taking place. I'm not sure if anyone's keeping up with that. Um, and then, obviously, you know, this, this, this focus on censorship and how censorship is definitely something that, um, you know, should have been gone um, many a times ago, but we're seeing this revamped again. Um, especially in the in the context of the global. And if you know, obviously, you know, this is not every single little thing. So, you know, please use the chat if there's something that, that you feel, man, you know, this is happening too. In 2023, we should be focusing on this. Well, by all means, I respect that particular ethos. So check this. When we look at the macro, also even like scaling this on the local level, meaning like just looking at California, Southern California, we gotta, we cannot ignore, right? The unhoused, right? The folks who who do, who are, um, you know, who are homeless, who are unhoused, um, or without housing. Uh, we cannot ignore the cost of living. Um, this is also part of this particular scenario situation that we have, you know, fixed in 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 the mindsets of what we're expecting uh, for us to also face, you know, definitely within in the next year. Uh, we're also looking at the rising cost of education in higher ed. And that's not, you know, that's something that was already stipulated. That's something that's already part of the system. The rising cost of food. Now we got a food crisis, of course. You know, we're thinking about access to food. And of course, right, you know, a topic that is not going away anytime soon or ever, immigration, right? Things and concepts that, of course, you know, also speak to a bigger picture. Also looking at not just the local, but also the global. But here's where the micro, right? Here's the stuff that you're not going to see or hear about typically on the news. Number one, and I'm going to point this out for sure, the community. We saw once again, you know, once, you know, during the pandemic, community was vital, right? 
community is vital to the survival of, of, of itself. And so how did community pull together? You know, we're seeing this um, not only during that time, but we've seen this through time, right? Through, through history. So when we talk about how folks look after each other, when we talk about how folks go through, um, you know, different periods of hardships, how neighbors pull together, this is nothing new. This is something that, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to announce that we've been seeing this, right? And I don't mean the closed net, closed gate communities, right? We're talking about communities from South LA. We're talking about Oakland. We're talking about Detroit. We're talking about folks in Flint, Michigan, pulling it together to be able to, to address the wrongs and how they've been left behind yet again. And so I want to, I, I want to ask you this, right? What did you observe in your community that was not met by the local or state government? Let me get that chat active right now. Let me get you going in that chat. Please type it in. If you want to breathe it, you're more than welcome to. But I want us to I want us to, to get you to type it in. That way, um, you know, my colleague can absolutely see that and, and visualize this, right? Because I argue, right? This is the stuff you're not going to hear. This is the stuff that's not going to make the Channel 4 news, right? We're not going to hear about that. We're going to hear about the usual process, right? The, the criminalization of black and brown folks and the, and, and the impoverished. How about this one? Familia, right? The family. You know, we're not going to see this, right? We're going to talk about pillars of ancestry and everyone has a different format of family. We talk about new families. We talk about the ways in which, you know, our ancestry was built on this structure. I want us to understand that this also becomes part of the ways in which we deliver ourselves into the world. And so, you know, you know, just I want you to think about this, right? How has your family, how has your you know, your conceptual idea of family, how does that serve to remember your own ancestors, right? We just had the other Los Muertos not too long ago. So I want us to also, you know, kind of revamp and rethink about the ways in which family has, has been able to bring this together, right? And another concept that I believe is the individual. And I want you to look at yourselves right now. I want you to really see yourselves for who you are. I want to see, and I want to know that you understand your genius your potential your power because you don't you may or may not hear that all the time after all show of hands right now how many of you wake up look at yourself in the mirror and say yes i am a genius but i got a room full of them well but i get but i'm gonna tell you what you do get told you are told that you can't do this or you can't do that or maybe you shouldn't try this or why should you do that Let's think about this. Let's think about the culture this is bringing in. Let's think about the way in which in which folks are being viewed for the future, for, you know, for their own relationship with themselves, right? And how does that obviously transfer to the next chat? I want you to understand that every single person in this room has the ability to, you know, definitely bring out that geniusness, whatever that may be, okay? And my challenge is, what is the genius you have? What have you realized about yourself? Again, I challenge folks on the chat. Please put that in. I think I only have one participant in the chat placing themselves up. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Valerie, 100%. And so, you know, have you tapped into that? Have you tapped into that idea, right? And so as we're going through this, right, as we're going through this particular process, please understand that a lot of the things that, you know, we value, right? And I have asked many a students many a times, right? What exactly do you value? And these come up all the time. And so if we're not typically hearing about this, seeing this, reading about this, then where does it go, right? It goes in that non-profitable economy that we don't speak about, right? And that is not the case. This is completely part of the scenario situation. So, when folks think about this, and I'm just I'm just gonna put this in here. I'm looking at the chat right now. I got excited. I got way too excited. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for for unleashing this, right? Yes, listening. I got manifest. Thank you. Rent control has always been has been a problem. Oh my lord. I realize I'm very of course you're smart. Of course you're smart. Whoever tells you, Alessandra, that you're not is wrong. And I'll tell you why. Because how are we measuring intelligence? We just had this. We just had this conversation with Jacqueline. How do you measure intelligence? Who's telling you, right? 
and I'm not trying to jump the gun here, but standardized testing is not the way. That didn't show you anything except how cool you fill bubbles in or how you figure out the pattern, right? We can all give each other Rubik's cubes and let's see if we can figure those out, right? And, and, and flash amounts of time. But I want you to understand it goes beyond that, okay? So before I continue, please, tomorrow morning, make sure when you look at yourself in the mirror, not only are you beautiful, not only are you amazing, but you're also a genius, okay? Promise me, pinky swear that right now for everybody that you're going to do that. You're going to do that because that matters. And you're going to do that every day, right? Because I want you excited about your, your future. I want you excited about the world, despite everything we've seen, okay? That's important. So check this out. The state of 2023. What do you want to be, right? I got students, I got students from all walks of life telling me I want to change the world for the better. I want to help other people. And that's beautiful, right? Show of hands. Who wants to who wants to help other folks? Who wants to help other folks? Is there any anybody here with us? Yeah. A nod is okay. I will absolutely take that. Thank you very much. Yes. And so you know, obviously, we want to ask ourselves, why do we want to help other people? Why do we want to, want to help other people? That's always a good question, right? Why do you want to help other people? But even thinking about that, I got a few questions for you to think about for sure, okay? And so let me let me get to this right here. If we do want to help our, each other, if we do want to help other people, it's important to know who we are. It's important to know who we are as, in, as individuals, because if we don't, then how can we help other folks if we don't know who we are, right? And, you know, by no means am I gra I've gravitated this from, you know, something that I've invented myself. This has been taught to me a lot by critical race theory, a lot by African um, theology and philosophy. This is something that I've read and spoken about you know, through the realms of Ibram Kendi, from Cornel West, from Edge of the Day. I mean, these are things that have been built upon, but the questions are the same. The first question is very vital. The first question you got to ask yourself is, who am I? Who are you? Listen, we got the chat popping. Haley, thank you very much. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to lower your hand because you're participating. I appreciate it. I appreciate it 100%. Who are you? Okay, I've asked many students this question throughout my teaching time. I want you to please answer in that chat. Who are you? How would, you know, someone comes up to you and says, hey, who are you? After you introduce your name, of course, after you introduce, you know, well, by the way, you know, I, I'm, you know, my name is so-and-so, right? I'm a student, I'm just my major. That's awesome. Who are you? I want you to really take that question into consideration, right? Because the answers... And by the way, please fill that chat in. Please fill that chat in. Who are you? How would you identify? Who are you? I want you to look deeper because I got students, I got folks, I got colleagues, you know, who who place in there. And Stephanie, thank you very much. The amalgamation of the answers to greatest hopes and dreams. Beautiful. But who are you at the core of your existence? Who are you at the core of your existence? And this is a question I remember after reading, you know, pages and pages and pages and pages of Frantz Fanon, Aimé Césaire, right? Folks that have, have placed their value systems, and these are psychiatrists, right? Place their value systems and trying to see themselves in the, in the bigger picture of changing the world and making an influence, a positive influence, a constructive influence. Who am I at the core of my existence? If we can all agree that at the core of our existence, we are human beings and that you are a human being as much as I am, then we cannot permit any of the isms in our society because at that point, we are talking about inequalities. We're not talking about equal. We're not talking about respect. We have to see each other as human beings, which means human beings as one of the most famous parts of being a human is being erroneous, infallible. We make mistakes. And if we make mistakes, then we have to understand that too as a process, because the next question is always going to be, am I who I say I am? 
you tell me you're a human being and yet you act contrary. In other words, you don't see other folks perhaps as human, perhaps as equal to you. Perhaps you openly discriminate. Perhaps you quietly discriminate. Right? We understand our families, many of our families, of course, are very much in tune with this ideology, right? As long as it doesn't go past the door, we're good. You want to see that what you do inside and outside has to be parallel. Am I who I say I am? And I always tell this to students, by the way, you know, just because you see the humanity of one person, right? Let's say you're on the road, and I'm a, and a lot of you're on the road, right? But have you been cut off before? Jasmine's like, yo, I just got cut off. And so did, did we remember the humanity of the individual that cut us off? Probably not, right? You know, there's a, many expletives that go with this, many conversations that go with this. But we have to understand that folks are fallible. So this is about accountability, folks. And this is just for the self, right? The third question that goes with this is, am I all that I can be? Meaning, am I all that I can be given the infrastructure provided in society? In other words, what I have in society provided for me is going to nurture me, is going to create the possibilities of me reaching my highest potential of geniusness. Is that something that is possible? That's something that is going to be uh, a real. And so we want to help other folks, but we want to make sure that we're solid too. And so let me get you through this challenge. And it's not a coincidence I chose, I chose the imagery. I want you to really think about this as well as I'm talking about this. The biggest concept of what we've gone through has a lot to do with colonialism it's still around in the 21st century so i don't i put quotes around post there's no way i can talk about a post-colonial system when my brothers and sisters from puerto rico and other parts of the world are still very much colonized so let's think about this we talk about all these forms of violence and i've done this many a times where i think about violence but in a much more much more um nuanced format right that isn't just aiming at the physicality whether it's yesteryear or today, whether it's enslavement, brutality, forms of lynching process, which I've always defined as a total destruction of the human being, whether it's placed in a position of submission, we've seen this particular formatting since 1492. That has been a part of our storyline in the Western Hemisphere, North, South, Central America, and the, the Circle Caribbean. Whether it's psychological violence, and this, this can go definitely into today. Whether it's assimilation practices. In other words, you're told to leave your culture behind and adopt something alien to substitute that. You know, and that goes as simple as feeling ashamed for eating the food that's your comfort food at the workplace or maybe at school. That also goes into the notion of divide and conquer politics. Let's pit folks against each other. Let's pit communities against each other. Let's have them battle it out. And who wins? Power. Power structure wins. We've seen this when we know that positions of power also lead to folks being abused, being abused verbally. Why? Worse than, worse than our plantation owners back in the day. And they look like us. That's phenomenally scary. And so not only do we have this ongoing psychological violence, and by the way, some of them are in our family members too. That's even scarier. You know, the space that you're supposed to consider for love. And here it is, right? Placing the colonial value system of abuse and brutality. How about environmental violence? We know our brothers and sisters from Native America, land removal. But what happens when they construct a freeway? Speaking of freeways, right? What happens to constructing the freeways that go through your neighborhood? Or what if you live next to a freeway? How's your breathing going? Let's think about that. And this stuff is very much connected. And then we have, of course, you know, the notions of colonialism, the destruction of resources, 
tainting water. And it gave Flint, Michigan, I mean, it's not the only space, but it's one, one more space, right, that we're seeing these things. Or monopolizing resources, right? You know, this goes with the notion of imperialism. Let's go out to a different nation, take over their, their land, resources, labor, oil, you know, you know, or or you know, whatever whatever particular commodity at the time. And then, you know, let's 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 uh, let's let the locals figure out how they survive. Or how about legal violence, right? We talk about segregation. Folks think segregation is long and gone. That's what's funny. And I say that academically because you know, there's a there's a work I'm working on, and just as a hint, right? It's called Under the Same Sun. Under the same sun, we have the same school places, right? But yet, totally different experiences. But we're under the same sun. So you tell me there's no segregation. Right? Or how about restrictive covenants, redlining, right? Some of those elements that that we believe have gone long and far, but now they're coded, right? Now we have coded language. Or how about the element of deportation and separation of families, right? Folks that have been serving the military. Folks have also been part of the system working, paying taxes. And yet, as soon as, uh, you know, any, any particular infraction, there's a question whether or not this person is actually a good citizen. When we know the most folks who commit crimes in this country are actually citizens. Not the undocumented. And by the way, no one's illegal. I mean, I've jaywalked before. I, I don't consider myself illegal, right? So let's think about this, right? Criminalizing people, individuals. And how about unprotected labor rights? It's like we're back in the Industrial Revolution. We got child labor. We got folks that from our community who have also been part of this now who have witnessed this, not only in urban sectors, but also back on farms, right? Back in agricultural sectors, you know, getting minimal protections, being invisible to the system. And that goes next to the institutional violence, xenophobia, miseducation, right? Those, those particular practices of, of xenophobia, when we're talking about um, policies, whether it's the Trains Exclusion Act, or we're looking at Operation Wet back in the 1950s. This idea that folks are taking away good jobs from who? From who? Good Anglo-Americans in, in this particular nation. And what about having been miseducated? Why does it take going to college to hear about some of the heaviest conversations that has also influenced in the fabric of what makes this country what it is? Right. There's there. I mean, I've said this before a thousand times. I think my high school students know more about Adolf Hitler than they do about Jefferson Davis. They know more about, you know, the element of the Holocaust than they do about, you know, the, the genocides produced against Native America. And going right. It's not going. And so there's there's a discombobulation taking place here, as Corman was said. Or how about privatizing prisons, right? Or how about the mis the distrust in science? You know, a lot of folks forget the Tuskegee experiments that took place in this country from 32 to 72 that actually placed African-American farmers, males, inoculated with syphilis. And all of a sudden, it was just for science, right? This is in the name of medicine, having the resources and cures to prevent any particular deaths. I mean, this is what we've gone through, right? As community, as individuals. But we have foundations for resistance. We've seen this all along. This is nothing new. We've seen this through, you know, different epochs, whether it was an indigenous movement, whether it was a black resistance movement. You know, Gaspar Yanga, one of the first uh, resistant movements against enslavement taking place in Veracruz, Mexico. I mean, this is well before some of the most well-known uprisings that take place. A lot of these foundations that have clearly marked what to think about, how to think about life, how to think about moving forward. These are the pillars. These are the grounds in which we, we stand on today. And so when we're talking about legal visibility, 
this is a, this is a lot of the things that we're bringing into the conversation to really think about our persona, where we're at, where we need to be at. We need to be unapologetic and at access, not just to being treated equal in society, to having a quality education. That should not be a question, but it's a question. No, well, I don't know. I mean, I mean, you've heard this. Some of you uh, who've been following Florida, right? Well, you know, we don't really want to encourage this in high schools. I mean, Arizona went through the same thing, right? And so the fear, right? The element of fear, I think, is the. I think James Baldwin even called this out, right? You know, it's like I know more about you than you know more about me, right? All based on this element of fear. We need unapologetic access to having representation in all political arenas. What do you mean there's, you're going to tax us, but there's no representation. One of the most vibrant elements right now happening in Santa Ana, California, was the possibility of having folks who are not citizens, right? Folks who are residents being able to vote in their local elections because they have helped determine the structure of the city. They've placed the fabric of that city together. This is currently. Check it out, yo. How about unapologetic access to accessing workspaces, jobs, careers that have been historically denied? A lot of us remember not being told to go to college or, oh, hey, by the way, you might want to apply for financial aid one day. Or, hey, by the way, you know, if there's something that uh, you need, I'm here for you because that's my job. You know, the idea of the counselor, especially for, you know, many folks that came before me, including my own mentors, uh, basically relegating this notion that you belong where? You belong doing the same menial labor, menial labor over and over and over, right, to keep this generational. How to construct the ceiling. There you go. Unapologetic access to local, state, federal funds, to building our communities. You know, it doesn't take a genius to figure out the differences all across the Southland. One car ride. And folks should be asking why. Why is this happening? How is this possible? How is this that, you know, we can go on prior to the fire, of course, off the 10 freeway, tent city. How is that normal landscape? If anything, as I've been discussing previously, we're in a dystopian model as we speak. But the chickens do come home to roost because it can't last forever. By the way, I think the Olympics are coming around, no? So how do we gauge this? How do we engage this? How do we how do we process this particular format? This is what we got to be very much aware of. And so is there resistance? You better believe there's resistance to this. Was there resistance to accessing the, pol the political arena? Resistance to accessing positions of power? You better believe. When there's a person of color in power positions, there is a Hawkeye watch on that person. And they better move a certain way or else they're out. It's very, very taxing. And so when I talk about invisibility, right, that the resistance creates a sense of art and visibility. Um, and this is this this particular production is by a, um, a student of mine by the name of the Anita Vielma, who produces duality, right? This is a duality. Because how much of me is me and the rest I have to figure out, right? I've got to go from one job to the next trying to figure out, you know, how do I talk? How do I speak? How do I act? It's almost very neurotic. It's almost actually placing in multiple personalities in one shot. It's very fascinating, but it's also not very good, especially for the soul. And so when we talk about even folks who have consistently resisted, even segregation, and some folks don't know this, and some folks do. But, you know, when when, when the desegregation took place, and I'm talking about the 50s, 1950s, oh, 100 years ago, yo, we're talking about, you know, other schools shutting down, creating private schools. And not only that, they started new school districts. The story of Pasadena, Downey, right? All these different places, that's their story, right? We're not, we don't have to abide by LAUS. No, nope, we don't have to do that. We got our own thing, right? We got our own people. And so what happens, right, as you transverse these particular forums, these particular spaces, how do we engage this reaction, right? And it's very reactionary. It's 
it's very heavy, sometimes even violent. And so we got to create a new art form. We got to create a new visibility. And this visibility is this, right? That legal visibility. We're here. We ain't going nowhere. Right? There is nowhere to run. I got folks who have told me, well, let's go to Canada. It's not better. You know, like I remember this, you know, once uh, Trump was elected, oh man, we should go to Canada. You really think they don't have issues? You don't think there's systemic issues out there either? Right? Like, I mean, this is part of the fabric in which we're looking at. We just found there was just someone who was able to exacerbate this very clearly and very quickly. And so, you know, what we're looking at is we're looking at access to systemic and structural and legal change and visibility. Because this is what's this is what's vital. This is what matters. This is where the population wants to engage. And so with that, we arrive at this particular notion. And I really want to get us to thinking about this, right? In HSI, Hispanic Serving Institution, which has been around from my understanding from like the 80s. And why this is so important, imperative, because a lot of our schools, um, whether it's community college, Cal State, UCs, very well grounded and grounded in, in creating these spaces um, of learning. And there's no, no question about that. But when we're talking about serving, that concept itself needs to be taken more seriously. And so we need to look at the ways in which this particular element even applies of what do you mean by education? How do you translate this particular education to you know, the folks that you admit into your college system? Because technically speaking, and this is just a sample of what folks can come in with, right? After all, let me ask you, how many of you, you know, when we talk about imposter syndrome, right? It's this belief, right, that, you know, what you're doing or that you've gained a position or that you've gained a, a particular uh, kudos, if you will, that for some reason you just didn't deserve it. You feel like you're a fraud, right? How many of you have ever felt that way? Yeah, let me get a show of hands, please. And so we got to ask ourselves, right? You know, and, and thank you very much. And I will also, I'd like to share my story, right? Just right here, just to interject myself. Ironically, within my own presentation, I'm going to throw myself in, right? Um, that being, having this experience and, you know, being a professor and, you know, now I've got my office, right? I've got to hang my family pictures now. Now I'm legit, right? Or something like that. It didn't fit in. I was I was adjuncting or, or being a part time lecturer for a very long time. In fact, that's that's my role here at PO. But you know, being having access to this um, particular job position placed my mindset in survival mode immediately. Oh no no no, this can't be real, right? No no, no I got to hold on to this side my side hustle. By the way, how many of you guys side hustle? Put them in the chat. Go ahead. Let's get some plugs in there too, right? You got a side hustle? Put it in there because I want everybody to see what y'all do. It's so important because when, when folks say, I got a job, no, you mean jobs uh, with a Z at this point. And it's true. It's true. There's a point where, I, you know, as many of us, we still wear many hats. And it's not just to make it, not just to make ends meet, it's because what happens if one goes? What happens if the other one doesn't work out? How are we going to figure it out? This is not normal, friends. Colegas, compañeros, compañeras. This is not normal. It's not normal to think, oh, okay, let me just get an extra job because, you know, I'm going to make this. Or I got, you know, this, this is part of where we're at, where we've been placed in. And now we've been told, all right, here's the crumbs. Figure it out. Because if you keep up with policies from the gov and your policies from, from how they manage money, I mean, they're not talking about chump change, right? And that stuff moves fast. 
So I want us to understand that while we're all fighting for crumbs, right? Hoping, hoping, hoping to make rent, which I don't know what that is, right? There's this imaginary planet that says, that says everything's fine. We're good. We drink our champagne and everything's, you know, we light up our cigars and we're good. But let me let me just look at the chat here. Let's see custom party favorite. Thank you very much. All right, Casey, paint them, sell them on, on Etsy. Hanging wallpaper and painting bedrooms and kitchens. I make and sell scrunchies, promote brands on social media. And oh man, you know, there's so much. I know they're all, all folks trying to do something else. In fact, I still ask folks, how many of us are, you know, how many of y'all are happy? Thank you, baking cupcakes. And y'all welcome my, you know, into my classroom, by the way, right? To share this information so that we promote you. Because, you know, if it's going to be like that, we're going to survive. We're going to survive together. There's no other way. There really is no other way. Remember, community, right? You have to build. You have to build. So we know this is not a myth. I've experienced this. I got this. I got a job in Orange County, tenure track position for professor. I believe it. It took me four days to sink in that I got this job because my head's like, okay, that's cool. Thank you for the call. Appreciate it. Um, all right, I gotta get a job. I gotta do this. Okay, I gotta save up this. All right. Um, I hope everyone's happy with this. Okay, mom needs money. This needs money, right? So there's you know there's these extensions where. Yeah, I think people like me. I think people appreciate what I do, but maybe not. And so it plays with your mind. It plays with your spirit, right? Because of that colonial factor. We're not good enough. And that's not true. That's not true. Again, it took me a while to realize this. But I want to assure you, I want to assure you, you are good enough for everything. And if you're surrounded by people who tell you that you're not, get away from them immediately. Because that's not healthy. That's not that's not healthy. It's about you, the energy. The energy has to be there. Your energy has to be positive. Your energy has to be filled with positivity. I didn't say delusional. I said positivity. Those are different things. And so we also know that just like imposter syndrome is not a myth, microaggressions exist in education. All right. Please don't put professors' names down. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead, list any microaggressions you've received while accessing your education. Any microaggressions. This is a chance. I want you to be able to use that chat effectively. What microaggressions have you experienced? Because it's time. Can you share a little bit of what microaggression is? Yes, absolutely. And so, you know, I have a definition that I've, that I've played with. And, and I will be more than happy to read that for you. The everyday verbal, nonverbal, and environmental slights or insults, whether intentional or unintentional, which communicate hostile, derogatory, negative messages to target persons based solely upon their marginalized group membership. Or, and I'll give you an example. I experienced one. Oh, you speak pretty well. And, and I don't know where to go with that, right? So th these are just, that's like a very small example. I'm sure, I, mean, I don't know whether what they meant exactly, but, you know, it didn't feel right, right? It wasn't necessarily a compliment, if you will, right? Although they may feel like it was a compliment. So let me see, folks. Either, you know, if you have one, if you don't want to, if you don't want to mention one and you want to reserve it, I totally understand. But there are folks out there, which I guarantee you, those microaggressions in education exist as formats, um, you know, that that very much preach to our questions in terms of how we are engaging education for sure. Thank you very much. Overhearing racist comments. I was too old to continue with my degree. Yeah, how do you do that? Right? Question mark. Da -da -da, right. Um, you have a good you have a good job. Why do you want a degree for? Right? Decades ago I was forced to withdraw from university because of financial issues. At work, people tell me how it's possible I hold the position I have without having a degree already. I got an F because I did my paper on Trump from Bible college. Yeah, that's, you know, I mean, you know, any of these, right? I'm a single mom. You need to you need to work for your kid instead of getting an education. What are we telling people? And thank you very much, all of you. 
all of you for for mentioning this, being told how people of color should be should feel by white people, right? You know the reverse angle, right, of racism that we have here. Uh, you don't need to help. The resources are for people who need it. Fine, like you don't deserve it, right? My mom tells me to get a job already. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. You don't act like typical Sudanese women. Oh man, this a lot of you're 30, you should have having kids now, not going to school. Any of these, right? What are we telling this? We know that an educated community is always a thriving community. You know, a lot of the times it's our own family members who do this. That's what blows my mind. Ah, but yes, that's viejo. Yeah, you too all, bro, right? Eh, wouldn't you rather go to the party? Come on. You know, what are you, why are you reading, man? You know, you think you're better than us? I uh, bet you have heard that one. Oh, you think you're better than us now? Right? So all these elements that basically tell us that, you know, can the institution, by the way, it's not just our family members. We also have profs doing this. There's our professors. Some professors do this. But we got to recognize this. We got to recognize that whether it's microaggressions in the classroom, by peers, right? Whether we create the imposter syndrome. We want to be able to think about the fact that, you know, how do we conceptualize the space we're going to? Is the space we're going to nurturing for education? When someone's, when you feel a certain way, someone tell you, hey, it's not like that. Come on. We got to sit down. We're going to do this. Let's do this. Let's bring it together because it's your education. We want you to succeed. Has your institution told you that and meant it? I want you to understand this is real. And so I have a few recommendations. And these are my acknowledgments. I want you all to pay attention to this. We've heard of the isms. But I want us, I want the HSI to take this in all serious consideration. And I didn't put any music to this, but here you go. Some of the eyes that I hold on to dearly is that number one, we alive. Folks, we alive. I should say we still alive. Okay. Then we survive. That is ratchet education. And I mean that. Because we're bringing this together. We are we are products of sheer survival. Look at your ancestors. Look deeply at what they went through. Because always we survive, we revive and strive. That means we're fighting tooth and nail to bring everything together. Whether it's an education or whatever form. And then, of course, the question of we thrive. There's been samples without questions. You know, check this out. Our culture, many of our cultures, including Latinx, Latine, Hispanic, Chicana, Chicano, Chicanx culture. La vida es un carnaval. Of course, we use music because of the violence we faced. Man, we got to dance this off. I don't think everybody really understands that. You know, when folks get down for salsa, reggaeton, bachata, I mean, they're, they're dancing the violence off. They're bringing that together. And it's not a coincidence, right? Some of the greatest musicians, some of the greatest music forms have come under the craziest oppressions. That says a lot. That speaks a lot. So we a lot. We've also engaged this form as well, right? We are absolutely placed in that position in which we are not just surviving, right? We survive because of the forms that we've we've gone through. Whether we're looking at, you know, fighting sweatshop labor, we're looking at transgender as a legitimate identity, whether we're looking at fighting the idea that we should never be have been sterilized in history, right? That's the story um, of La Operación in Puerto Rico, right? That's the 1970s story of the East LA sterilization project against Mexican American and Mexican women. How about dousing our brothers and sisters at the border with gasoline and DDT? Just because we assume they were diseased. 
or one of my favorite representation representations here downright you know the way we express ourselves is artistic we don't just paint only you know fruit bowls and what have you there are spaces that capture scenes much like the aztecas did right using their forms of artistic value and here is frank romero right the arrest of los paleteros bringing it to us right now we're criminalizing folks who want to work i mean that stuff ain't new by the way right but it's not only this we do revive and strive so we're seeing more connections we got elected officials you know, not only from Boyle High, it's also from in Congress, you know, first LGBTQ plus brother in Congress for the Democratic Party, Rob Garcia, Ionisis, Hernandez. You know, we're looking at we're looking at, you know, the possibilities of changing Boyle Heights, right? Keeping it from being further gentrified. Or we're looking at the dual language, right? Something that was not a possibility where many of our folks were told, don't speak that language because they're going to harm you. They're going to fail you in life. Some of them don't speak or don't speak the language because they've been told not to. And it wasn't just family, it was the institution. Or how about fighting for continuing to fight for folks who are invisible, folks who are picking the fruits and vegetables that we consume on a day-to-day. -day. Folks that have been deemed basically invisible, but nah, nah. We have to recognize, right, that this stuff is still, you know, we're reviving the culture, we're reviving these movements. You've probably been paying attention to the number of strikes that have been taking place all across America. That's not a coincidence, right? People want dignity. Even Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta said that. Give people dignity, they will give you respect. Because you can't take that away. That's why. And what about Puente, right? The Puente programs for the community colleges. And I want to argue it's one of the best systems I've seen, along with the legacy of the A to Men, any of these particular series. In fact, while we thrive and we have examples, we have literary examples, we definitely have folks in Casa Cero Uno, Cero Uno, Playhouses in Boyle Heights. We have Judy Baca, who's been performing excellently in the artistic fashion, right? Jose Hernandez. You know, as much as the, you know, all these forms of STEM research that have been showing that it wasn't just Anglo-Americans who put this together. Right? Down down left, if you don't know, Ellen Ochoa, amazing person. So amazing. My son met her. There's such luck. And let me, let me explain to you this. What should HSIs do? This is the recommendation. I want a feed of program. That's what I want to see. You want to talk about dreams? This is a dream. This is a feedment program, the first year student guidance, a feedment program to have folks who are coming into the institution to have guidance for that entire year, start to finish. And I mean legitimate. All of these have the focus of legitimate feedment mentorship, meaning tagging with different faculty members who are looking after them, saying how just not just even how you doing, but how you doing in the class. What can I do to help you? How can I do to forward that conversation that you have about what you're thinking about and doing with this particular career model that you have in your mind? Or how about let's put that conference together. Let's take you to conferences. Let's put this together to create something that's a resource for different parts of the United States as much as different parts of the world. I mean, we got folks who went to South Africa. You're telling me that's the only place we can go? I doubt. It. How about this? We got to think about you know, places in la comunidad, places in the community that we have to access to. We got to bring this to the local because, you know, remember, as much as our community college, as much as Pacific Oak, Oaks is, is, is devoted to the art of social justice, let's bring the social, let's bring the justice into the equation. Let's be real about this. Let's connect. Let's be serious about connecting. Chile, Caracen, these immigrant rights groups that are very much you know, speaking to folks that on a day-to-day -day are in the struggle. Or how about just following up? Even just after that first year is done, that doesn't mean you're done. Let's follow up. Let's follow up that mentorship. This is about retention, folks. This is how you get folks to believe. And so for me, this is where it's at. I want us to really think about this for sure. Thank you. And what to expect in 2024. Lastly, is this two steps back? Two steps forward or one step back. The challenge is there. We got elections coming up. Everyone who's available and willing and able to vote needs to vote. 
Please do not lag on that. We have to get the vote out there. But we also need representation. And we also need candidates that aren't just there to dangle a flag and get us get us all psyched up about something that's not going to happen. So why don't you run? I believe in every single one of you. And I know you can. Why don't you run for a position? A lot of folks said it couldn't be done. And you got Eunice's in Boyle Heights. And there she is. One of the youngest reps in District 1. And I'm going to leave you with this quote because I think it makes sense. I Actually, I want to I want to credit Professor Gilbert Estrada from Long Beach City College who, who reminded me when he was talking about the East LA interchange and the way Boyle Heights was being, and especially East Los was being transformed in that multi-freeway system. He said it great. He said the spirit of Boyle Heights, but I'm going to substitute that with community because I believe it's community. Spirit of community cannot be broken. As much as much has been tried over and over, you know, for profiling, police brutality, the lack of resources, so on and so forth. But that spirit is there. And so let's expect something. Let's expect something that's proactive, constructive for 2024. Let's keep in mind the feedment practices. And I want to thank you very much for allowing me in your spaces this evening. Siempre espíritu. Thank you, Dr. Artua. Wonderful presentation. Um, I do. I, I am mindful of the time. It, it, we have hit the 6.30 mark, but I do want to open it up to some uh, questions. Feel free to unmute yourself, put it in the chat box, or just raise your hand and we'll go ahead and call out on you. Um, such a powerful presentation. Thank you so much for the information. Definitely lots of things to think about. Um, really appreciate your presentation. Thank you, Dr. Tua. And thank you to everyone who joined us and participated. We hope that, you know, uh, you definitely have some takeaways from all this. And again, if you just joined us um, a little later, uh, this will be recorded and will be available to be viewed. So we'll go ahead and share that out to everyone uh, who registered. Um, any questions, thoughts, comments? I see a lot of comments in the chat box, Dr. Tua. Thank you so much. Definitely resonated with some uh, all. Thank you, thank you. Any questions? Any I, think this, I think this is what happens when the lights come on after the show. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Well, it was uh, very educational, what we have in the chat box. I really enjoyed um, uh, your presentation. It was very inspiring as well. Thank you. Yes, it was. Thank Definitely. you. Everybody knows Can what I to do say something? Me. Anything, Absolutely. please. Nala, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, my name is Nala, and I'm from Sudan. I am um, a singer, and I've been just, you know, like, a, it's all for, uh, you can say, an, an artivist. So um, I've noticed like recently since the, the Gaza uh, conflict yes. that everything, everything, you know, uh, uh, you know, like just turned uh, to that region. Although what was going on in my country since 2019, 2018, which was like, uh, it's all planned, you know, people now are dying. I lost a couple of uh, my family uh, re just recently, last month, two of them. And um, nobody even mentioned that region. Nobody mentioned uh, Africa. No, nobody mentioned Sudan. And it saddened me. And as I was, uh, especially the, the professor, uh, the last two chapters, I was saddened, you know, by by how all these, you know, so-called uh, countries, free countries, they're not so free. They're treating, uh, you know, countries like mine, like a, you know, a reserve, you know, like extra reserve for them. People are enjoying life here and they dare to ask you, hey, go back to your country or hey, do this and that. You know, it's just so, so sad. Nobody knows about these uh, conflicts, although the Ukraine war, the Ukraine war was funded by the very goal that's been genocide in Darfur because of it, because that's what Russia wants. 
That's what the United States wants. That's what Israel wants. And they got all these, you know, like rich countries like Saudi Arabia, uh, UAE, you know, they're all working as agents for these countries. So how can we just stop the fear and talk about all these stuff, and, you know, and and uh, it's just sad, you know, I can't, I can't, yeah. I cannot be not emotional about it. I cannot. You have to be emotional now, though, and I think it's it's the right thing. And of course, our condolences, without a doubt. I think it's a it's a, you know, this is symptomatic, right? This is something that we've seen, and anyone who's uh yeah who's been part of the academic circle or, or even just around it, you know, you realize that as I always tell students, now that um, the best you know to find out what's really happening in the world is to read outside the United States, right? Yes, to read outside because um, I think, and by the way, reading is. Is another particular story, right, in this element. Um, but I wanna, I wanna assure you that you know much of what we, what folks in the general population don't know is because there is no, there is no concern for actually just looking outside the box, if you will, right? Looking outside what you're typically given on the nightly news or the mainstream news sources, but and there's no comparison, right? And so you know the challenge is to have students be able, not just students, but the community at large. Right. Because it doesn't make, you know, when you start looking at it and you start looking at policies in terms of the ways in which different countries around the world are not necessarily siding with American foreign policy, then it becomes very obvious in terms of, OK, so something's not actually being transmitted. And what you mentioned, Nala, is that a lot of the news here in the U.S. just kind of disappears and comes back and disappears only in terms of convenience, only when it, it serves a particular purpose. And it's sad to say, right? It's it's sad to say because, you know, we want a literate society. I would guess we would want a literate society, but we also want to pay attention to the fact that if it's not happening, there is a there is a purpose. There is a purpose. So, yes. you know, we want to be mindful about this and inform folks, hey, you want to learn about the truth? Please read outside the US. Please read alongside the US. Please read, please become involved so that you're better knowledgeable. So that we're not making just unilateral um, emotional emotional uh, calls on spaces that you know technically uh, we've known, right? Many of us have known, uh, you know, conflicts in the Middle East, conflicts in 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 uh, Eastern Europe that you know predate, right? A lot of our students even births, right? For lack of better words. Um, so yeah, so you definitely have you know my empathy and my sympathy and. And solidarity, because you know this is this is just symptomatic of of um, how um, you know the media has has been portraying right has been portraying um, major major events that have been happening you know across time. So thank, thank you, Nala, for your comment. You. And by the way, I I have I have a bibliography I didn't show y'all right, but if you're anyone's interested, you know I have. You know, I do have a bibliography that I can provide, um, you know, for um, for this particular presentation, if, if you all would like would like access to that. Please do so. Dr. Thua, there is a question in the chat box. How do you manage the emotional labor that comes with doing this work? Marissa, thank you very much also for, and now again, thank you for your question. Um, uh, you know, it, it's not easy. I think it's, it's I'm not desensitized. Um, you know, but firsthand experience counts and firsthand experience in terms of, of being able to think about, uh, you know, the violence I've seen firsthand, you know, growing up and being Colombiano as much as, um, you know, as much as comparing it, as much as trying to understand it um, and speaking to victims as much as, you know, folks who, who uh, you know, who have been consistently victimized um, to, to serve as at least a voice, to serve as as an advocate to serve as as someone other than, you know, just you know, just someone who's taking notes down. Um, I think sometimes it's not easy. You know, I do have my I do have my moments um, because you know we're still human. And I, and, I, and again, right, I move with love, and I've, I've you know it may sound cheesy to some people, but it has to be that way. You know, I have to love humanity to 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 want to assist humanity as well. And you know, how could I reach out to someone? 
if I just see them as a as a number, or I see them as just you know nothing but right. Um, you know, I want to see, I want to be able to understand that this this really brings in for me, um, you know, a, a part where that connectedness, you know, helps bring us together and helps bring us, you know, to a, to a better space. So, so it, it does take a lot, but it also takes, you know, it takes, it does take strength. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, that's, that's everyone's susceptible. Right. But I want you to understand that if I do this, I am, this is my labor of love. You know, this is my labor of love because I want us to know, I want us to move forward, but I want, I want us all to know, I want us to recognize that, that this, just didn't coincidentally happen right that we're we're consistently moving but we need to understand how why and what's what's brought us here um and it's and it's a lot it is a lot and there's a lot of challenges there's a lot of successes and there's a lot of defeats right so you know let's let's acknowledge this yeah i hope that answers your question thank you anyone else Well, yes. Uh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I know we're um, I know we're over the time. Uh, this is a mod, by the way. I just mm -hmm. had a quick a quick question because I always wonder about this, and uh, same with my parents. They always wonder, they're like, who we should vote for? Uh, how should we decide that? Because um, when, for example, like just throwing out an example with like uh, President Biden right now, um, we see that for the past four years and. You know, the same with being the vice president with uh, Obama, he's been supporting things, uh, political things that 20 years ago he was not supporting. He was against, and there's like clips of him saying that he was against. Uh, he was against them, and same with uh, uh, Trump, and like same with everyone else that I watched videos of them before and now they have changed their mind so much. Uh, so that puts me in a very, especially for this year that I can vote, it puts me in a very complex position where I don't know who to vote for. I don't know who to support or what to do. It, it you know, it made like, you know, sometimes I just make my mind. I'm like, you know what? I'm not even going to vote. I'm just going to keep it that way. Uh, yeah. Just like, you know, if you have any ideas on like how to decide things like this. And I think this is the challenge. That's why I brought in 2024, right? As a last piece, because uh, we're definitely facing this. There's a lot of things that, you know, we want it to happen. Um, don't get me wrong, right? I think a, a lot of folks voted for Biden because it wasn't the opposition, right? That wasn't necessarily the number one choice or two or three. Um, I want to say that, um, you know, it's placed a, a very, very strong strain on the relationship between community and what was supposed to happen. I mean, the issue you're bringing up uh, you know, Ahmad is is very, uh, you know, it's it's very key. As much as the, you know, the the uh, conversation about, um, you know, student free debt, right? That you know, folks, students were supposed to get, you know, that you know their debt payments paid off at this point. Um, it didn't happen, right? And so, I mean, what about? And again, right? These are just a series of things that folks have been feeling let down consistently. So, we want to be able to to see outside that are there you know if we're looking at blue and red and that's all we got i mean what are real choices and, and it's not and i can't give you a straight answer like well over this guy because that's that's not realistic right you know that's not the way we should have been thinking in the first place we should have been thinking something like well you know this candidate speaks for this and this is you know but you start seeing foreign policy and there's much more relatable right much more much more similar than they are separate and then in local policy yeah you might see a, a few differences here and there um, but last i checked inflation skyrocketed the gas prices are astronomical right here in southern california uh rent is crazy um you know the in houses is, is is out of proportion um and you know for some reason la city mayor believes that they're gonna have that solution right definitely before the definitely before the olympics and so I don't want to know the solution because I have a feeling it's going to hurt back to the 1980s with, uh, you know, with the deportation of folks from L.A. out to, you know, the Inland Empire. Um, so, you know, it's it's not an easy one. Ahmad. It's not an easy one. But I want you to I would ask. This is what I would ask. Right. If I would ask, you know, someone say, hey, let's listen to folks and let's see if there are other options. 
that's what's probably what what's what's um you know historically if want if I want to see anything relative, I look at Mexican politics. That you have a president right now who's Lopez Obrador. Some people love him. Some people really don't. But all in all, at least there's a different option from the state structure that's usually spit on people, right? Eat this because it's going to give you, it's going to feed you for a week and you're going to have a great party. Well, there has been some changes in that country. Um, pros and cons, of course. But, you know, let's, let's think about, let's think about different options. I'm not afraid to say that. Let's think about different options. Why is it that we, you know, you know, why is it that it's unforeseeable that we can have a third party candidate, someone that's that someone that actually speaks to community? You know, this has to be a reality because it's not, you know, this is not flying anymore. It's not flying because they're not connecting. And I hope about that 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 helps answer some yeah. little bit. I, I definitely I definitely agree because right now it's you know Republican and then Democrat. You don't know who the president supports, whether like he's actually Republican, Democrat, whichever side he chooses, he chooses the idea of that side. So I think that's what's been happening. Definitely, like a third party would definitely be a solution for this. I mean, um, it, it, can I say something? Sorry. Yeah, Nala, your hand was up. I, no, I not a problem. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't so, be sorry. Um, Don't be sorry. I have noticed. Like uh, 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 Trump, uh, uh, you know, like when he was like um, put the the Muslim ban, you know, all the Muslim uh, community was you know mobilized against him. Okay, yeah. so uh, that's why Biden is here. So now Biden, you see how how tricky is this? Is the same ideology that Islamists in my country or in the Arab world, using religion or family values or whatever to rally people. So what they're doing right now, like I've, I've heard a lot of moms here, you know, Muslims are very, you know, like, uh, 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 what kind of passionate about, you know, Islam and the values and stuff. So um, Muslims now, they're gonna vote for Trump because Trump is against LGBT. You see how this 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 works? So this is yeah. very dirty, you know. I just I just can't fathom the fact that we we're being played all the time. All the time. This just it just doesn't it, it, it doesn't it's not good. what I believe is this uh, the, the system here serves the system itself. It doesn't matter who, who is on the you know, as a president, Republican or, it's just agenda of the whole system. Uh you know, I, I don't, I don't think there is any hope soon. It's just part of uh, you know, wiping, wiping out all you know, uh, just, just for us to be either conservative or. Uh, liberal or whatever, that's not gonna ha that's not gonna be the situation in the next, uh, you know, 10, 10, 10 years from now, because they well, are playing us all. But, well, you know, I, I don't want to disagree too harsh on that. Um, and so, thank you to everybody. Thank you everybody for sticking on and hearing in and, and chiming in thank and going you. back and forth. And so, yeah, we're. I mean, of course, let's uh, you know, let's bring these conversations to the classroom. 